if they bought Bitcoin instead of gold, they would have an excess of 80 billion dollars. If they bought 10% Bitcoin and 90% gold, they would have an excess of 20 billion dollars. I actually use Bitcoin as a measurement for inflation. When Bitcoin price goes up 100% in a year, this is my inflation rate for the euro, for the dollar. If you stop pedaling, you fall. I'm glad we can stack the Toshis uh, on such a low level, on such a cheap price. For every woman in the country, if they make 2.1 babies on average, the population stays stable. And Turkey was always over that. Up until this year, this year it's at 1.5 and it's the most significant drop in the world. When Michael Saylor stacks, he stacks for us too. When Bukele stacks, he also stacks for us. So yeah, we all work together as a community. Money printing is taxation. Bitcoin is the only true ownership. You live in Turkey and Turkey is really interesting for me because when you live in Turkey, you actually experience a hyperinflation. I mean, depends on what definition we look at, because sometimes they say like hyperinflation is all, only if we have 50% inflation per month. There are mm -hmm. some weird definitions of that. But if you have in Turkey, it's like 75, 80% inflation, like the official one. Official but then there's one. like That's the trick. That, that's the trick. And then it's like higher, like 100%, 120%, whatever it is. How does this uh, impact uh, your personal life? And maybe how does this even impact personal lives that you see around yourself who don't have Bitcoin? Mm -hmm. So I think this is a good question to begin with. So let me start with the official inflation numbers. And so there's a group of professors that also calculate the inflation independently and they find it like over 100% and this and that. So... I mean, technically, even that's not really realistic because, as you know, the CPI is faulty by design. So if something is getting more expensive and people are consuming it less, its weight in the basket of goods decreases. So it always has manipulated results like everywhere around the world. So uh, anyhow, uh, for example, I want to give this uh, specific example. So I think it was year 2021 and Volkswagen Polo had this uh, car, 1.2 liters uh, automatic transmission. And it was in the, it was in the uh, inflation basket as the automotive. So that was the car they selected. You know what happened that year? Uh, Volkswagen in Turkey brought five or six of those cars, only like a very limited amount. And it was like, I don't know, 3% uh, more expensive than 1.0 motor and a manual transmission. And everywhere else around the world, it was like at least 17 to 20% of price difference. Literally, the government talked to the Volkswagen distributor in Turkey, told them, <laughs> that that car will be in the CPI basket and told them not to bring those cars and keep the prices low on that model. And this was so retarded because uh, <laughs> that year Volkswagen was thinking of opening up a factory in Turkey. They ended up, I think, opening uh, up the factory in Czech Republic, Czechia. Uh, and I think this may be part of the issue because when you have when you manipulate the price of that car, then people don't buy that one. Uh, they can't even buy that one. They buy other Seats or other Volkswagen cars. But the whole uh, sale of their Segment B was lowest ever that year. So it was a very governmental stupid decision, let's say. It's it's amazing for me because when you see, I actually right now like most of the stuff that I buy is Bitcoin. Like I, I it's like I, I I buy also my my uh, I also have to pay my bills and stuff like that. Okay. But most of the stuff that I buy with my things is just Bitcoin. So yeah. I actually use right now Bitcoin as a measurement for inflation. Mm -hmm. Like when Bitcoin price goes up hundred percent in a year. This is my inflation rate for the euro, for the dollar. And then yeah. it's interesting because when you look at the last one year, and I just looked up the numbers, uh, the last one year for the US dollars, it's like 109%. So a little bit over 100% uh, 
inflation rate when we count Bitcoin as inflation rate. The Turkish lira has almost 180% inflation rate against Bitcoin. Now, I, uh, I love taking Bitcoin as the standard, as the actual measurement, and then measure everything against Bitcoin. And then we have like a, a better inflation, a better measurement of, of, of the things. I mean, it's not real inflation. I know inflation yes. you have to measure individually, everyone who, who buys something, but it's a great uh, anchor point, I feel like. Yeah, it is like, I mean, I think it's not a real good gauge at the moment because, you know, like fiat is too volatile, you know, <laughs> not Bitcoin, fiat is volatile. I always say that because Bitcoin is very stable. You know that you'll get a block in every 10 minutes, approximately, you'll get like a, I don't know, uh, mining difficulty change in every 2016 uh, blocks, 200,000 blocks, uh, halving reward comes. So it's very stable and fiat is not. So yeah, it's really hard to gauge that at the moment because yeah, they can manipulate fiat and since they have the media and yeah the, all the buttons at their power uh, it becomes hard to gauge with bitcoin and i don't know price of bitcoin is really irrelevant at this moment yeah absolutely and then you just like you want to have this one asset that you can actually rely on and you really don't care about what the price is like i I'm glad we can stack uh, Satoshis uh, on such a low level, on such a cheap price, because all of a sudden, when it's like a 200,000, 300,000, I would also buy it. Like I would, yeah. like it, do it does not change my buying behavior. I buy with all the money that I have left over. I buy Bitcoin. If it's a 10,000, yeah, 100,000, a million. But the behavior doesn't. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'll, quick question, Robin. If I switch tabs, I want to look at something. Uh, would it disrupt the video, by the way? Or no, no, it should be fine. Uh, let's, okay. let's just try. Like you can, you can switch tabs and and, and see everything. And, and I think uh, you you should still still be here. <laughs> okay, let's test that in action. Okay, so the, I really want to talk about something about money. For example, you know when Julius. Caesar died or Rome burned down, uh, yeah, the value of their money didn't change because it was a set amount of gold, the, the coins were. But, okay, this is the tricky part. So, uh, in year uh, 1998, August, uh, the DXY was at 103. So, DXY is a dollar, uh, you know, index. And by October, it was around 90s. Okay, trick question is, do you know what happened during those times? Between what? Between the 90s? Between 1998, uh, yeah, August and 1998, October. Oh, I have no clue. Yes. So this will be very surprising. So literally DXY dropped close to 12%. So literally everyone in the world who was holding dollars kind of lost their purchasing power. And this happened during the Clinton versus Monica Lewinsky trials, uh, which literally was about a blowjob. So it's so sad that, you know, like some guy's erection or not or whatever could destroy a currency. But back in the days when the, the ruler, the Caesar died, nothing happened. So this is the state of the money we have right now, unfortunately. But but wait, wait, how how did this uh, impacted the money that they have had a trial? During the trial, it literally started dropping because there was loss uh, of uh, trust to the government, to the president. Because because the trust is not in the currency itself; it's in the in the leadership in 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 the country in the government itself. So when yes. they they do something weird, all, all of a sudden, also the currency that everyone holds out, ah, that makes sense. That's 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 a perspective that I never really covered on the podcast mm -hmm. uh, because Bitcoin is I don't so. Think not that many people mentioned the blowjob led money, aka the dollar before, but yeah. When you think of it, it makes sense. So also, I'll tell you a really good another real good example about the management and the its impact to the money. So, you know, Turkish lira 
is doing really bad against other fiat currencies over the last years, blah, blah, blah. We have the same guy running the country for over, I don't know, 22 years now. Uh, at some point, he made his son-in-law the minister of finance. And after that, uh, the Turkish lira literally uh, went, started to go into a very bad direction. Because, yeah, it was this one guy's decision again, making his relative or son-in-law the minister of finance, who has no idea about, you know, monetary issues. And after that, yeah, we, we can't fix it still till, till today. Uh, it, 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 it makes a huge, huge difference when you have a, a money that is packed to actual things like energy with, with Bitcoin, mm -hmm. with like math, math, maths and energy. Uh, and then there's like currencies that is just packed to the trust of, of a government. <laughs> It's, a, yeah. it's amazing to see. Yeah. Um, the, the, the entry question that I ha had as well like, was like how inflation and, and you see it probably in, in Turkey better than, uh, than other way. Like still in Austria, we have inflation uh, and mm -hmm. inflation is not, not, uh, as, uh, bad as in Turkey, but probably mm -hmm. you have a better view of, of that in, in Turkey right now. How, how do you see inflation influencing personal lives, especially those lives who don't have Bitcoin and who don't hold uh, hard assets? So uh, I'll begin with this data point. So Turkey always had uh, fertility rates over 2.1. So if a country has two, for every woman in the country, uh, If they make 2.1 babies on average, the population stays stable. And Turkey was always over that up until this year. This year it's at 1.5 and it's the most significant drop in the world. Now people are afraid to bring babies under these conditions. So I think that's a very good tell of how things are going. That, that's uh, so like two point, uh, you were always above the 2.1 uh, metrics mm -hmm. uh, and now you dropped at what was the time frame how, how fast did you drop there I, uh, one year uh, last one year uh, was especially i think brutal like because um, yep uh, people uh, literally lost a lot of their purchasing power and i know so there's this uh, okay so i'll connected to this one. So I told you the current person is the president for 22 years. And at some point we had this other guy uh, named Suleyman Demirel and he was uh, a prime minister for 35 years. So actually there is a very funny song that th this artist did about the guy's presidency. It's like a song version of Forrest Gump telling the history line about the president back then. So this guy, uh, I saw a video of him the other day. He's talking about inflation and how inflation ruins the moral and ethic values of a nation and destroys its future. It's really good to listen to that. You know, he's like, oh, this makes sense. You know, like wonder what he did to support, what his actions were that were supporting it. And then you look at it and one time his promise to get elected was I'll decrease the retirement age by 15 years. <coughs> so literally, which means a lot of retired people getting paid by the government, which leads to a good amount of inflation. So similarly, last year we had elections and before that, uh, the current government enabled people around 40 years old or so if you had a job in year 2000, you could retire. And over 10 million people retired this way. So that also kind of ruined. So now none of the retired people are uh, happy because uh, like so many people are retired, purchasing power is lost. There's like an excess flow of money for a limited amount of goods. So everything is getting more expensive. It's, it, it's sad to it's sad to see like they, they decreased the the average uh, uh, 
uh, entry in the uh, pension system of yes, 15 yes. years to, to what age did they increase? 50 or what? This was like uh, for a limited amount of people back in the days, uh, Süleyman Demirali, the guy who was there for 35 years. And last year they decreased it for approximately 10 million people, if I'm not wrong. Uh, they lowered it down to 40. At age 40, people could retire. 40? Yes, it's called EYT. It has a long story. I don't know the details, but it's it's basically an election bribe, you know, so... I mean, for me, it's like the, the concept of retirement is... Like, yes, it's good if people do a job for a long time that they don't like, that they can finally okay. retire on. That's like a good thing. But honestly, the better thing is if you find as soon as possible something that you actually enjoy doing and okay. that you actually uh, enjoy doing above the retirement age. Because there's also an, uh, a lot of crazy statistics around the starting of retirement. A lot of people, mm -hmm. when they start retirement with like 60, 65, 70 years old, it's not long till uh, a lot of uh, medical problems all of a sudden start. They yes. never had it before. All of a sudden medical problems start. And uh, and I think what was the statistics like uh, at the average uh, uh, year someone spends in retirement is like, eight years or something like that. After yeah, eight yeah. years of retirement, people die in, on average. Yeah, yeah. It's like you, you you work so long in a job that did not satisfy you. And then after just a few years, you die. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's a really sad story. So I, I it's like always... riding a bicycle. If you stop pedaling, you fall. So Definitely. I, I love that analogy a lot. <laughs> yeah, that was a really good uh, chart study they did with this... Uh, so they sped up the bicycle and they let it run and they drew the charts of the path it followed. Yeah, so basically they all fall, but some fall further, some go farther. But yeah, you need energy. You need the proof of work or things stop. Yeah, and everything, especially for the people that go in retirement and they did something that they did not like. I would highly suggest to them find something that you really like doing. Like uh, uh, my grandpa, uh, for example, was uh, doing a lot of um, uh, physical labor with uh, wood. Like he was a carpenter basically, okay. and he did really nice things and he designed it and he was like just hours and hours in, in the in the garage and did that. And this was really good. Like this, this really kept him uh, going and he still uh, is alive and still keeps going and it's 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 amazing right. to see and it's uh, I, I love to okay. see and this that. may be a weird idea but I would love to see some uh, non fiat work made by him with Bitcoin stuff on it could be could be fun could could yeah be a new fresh of air for him as well. Yeah, and, and I even talked in the Michael Saylor interview. And Michael Saylor uh, was a little bit sharing of his personal side in, in my interview uh -huh. with him. And uh, I asked him um, what what does he has right now that he could not buy with money because he has so much money. Uh -huh. uh, and he said like a mission. And he then go went ahead and said like he was ready to retire. He was yes. ready to like step down as a CEO and retire. And, and leave basically the history and uh, cease to exist from the history books. Uh, and then, no, Bitcoin came along and all of a sudden he Gave got a mission. A yeah, he, he got his youth back and he got his energy back. And, and that's such such a beautiful thing to see that, uh, that all of a sudden people are engaged uh, again and doing something and, and getting drive and hope again. Yeah. No, you know, I love being part of the Bitcoin community. Like, okay, so I wore this t-shirt on purpose. So this was 2019, uh, January, February, around that time. And Hodlanot, who won this amazing victory against the fake Toshi, you know, <laughs> he started this, uh, yeah, lightning chain. So he sent, uh, I think it was, 100,000 Satoshis to Fartface, uh, 2,000 on Twitter. And Fartface sent, I did 10,000 more and sent it to someone else. And this went 
to I don't know over 200 people or something. So this went around until we reached the limit in the Lightning Network because it was like the maximum amount you could send. I'm not sure, but either it was 2.4 million satoshis or 4.2 million, something around that. So, yeah, we sent it to as many people as possible. And this was, these things bring the community together, for example. And like, yeah, that, that led to a lot of good friendships for me. And I know since then I'm like, well, you know, this is pretty cool. You could interact with a lot of people, do things, test stuff, like, yeah, help them do stuff. So I, I just really enjoy this aspect of Bitcoin because... It's not a, I, I don't think it's, for me, I cannot enjoy it selfishly. Because I know this, if I stack more myself and if I get my family to stack, so whenever I stack, I end up stacking for them too, in a way, because I take from the supply that's out there, the float. So I don't know, when Michael Saylor stacks, he stacks for us too, you know. When Bukele stacks, he also stacks for us. So, yeah, we all work together as a community in a way. How is that uh, aspect of Bitcoin that we actually like that's that's actually true? Like if you are doing good and you earn more money and you stack more Bitcoin, that's beneficial for me and all the other Bitcoiners. Yes. The same way is true when, when Marco Saylor is doing something, when, when other Bitcoiners are doing something. Uh, and this community aspect that you just mentioned and the the um, benefiting from each other aspect. How will this change society? I asked that myself so many times and I got different answers to that. Uh, but it's, it's, it's fascinating for me to see like what will happen uh, on a society that is inclined and incentivized to work together against uh, versus against each other like right, it, it is right now. Yeah, the, the problem is that I think we were aligned to work against each other. But when you think of it, the humanity never developed by, okay, wars, of course, increase technology a lot, this and that. But what lies beyond, behind the human potential, I think, is the ability to work together. So once we can manage to do that, yeah, it's also part of game theory, you know, like if people are collaborative, things flourish. So if somebody collaborates and someone else cheats, uh, the cheaters grow. But once the cheaters uh, take over the population, the whole population collapses, basically. So yeah, it's, I want to see more people collaborate with each other and I try to do my best for it as well. So I right, know I try to support all kind of Bitcoin projects, like, I know. For example, I saw your podcast on Fountain. I use Fountain because I support Fountain. I support you. Or, I don't know, let's say Thunder Games. I love that idea, giving Bitcoin to people via games. So I try to share it. So I see this other company. I'm like, okay, I think they could work together. So I send a message to Thunder Games, I send a message to this other one. I'm like, oh, maybe you should collaborate. So I do all this selflessly, but at the same time, selfly. You know, I know because I do it selflessly, but I know that it will end up benefiting me as well. Uh, it's, it's, it's very beautiful uh, that, and the one question that I had in mind before when we talked about Turkey, um, I feel like in Austria, people are not aware of inflation. They, they t sometimes talk about it, uh, but they are not really aware of, of the problem that comes with ha having this inflation. But in, in Turkey, the inflation is um, a bit higher. Uh -huh. So are people, uh, especially maybe outside of, of your Bitcoin group, are people aware of, of inflation and the problem and, and, and what uh, this, this means for their lives? Yeah, like, so right now, so it's like, you know, the classic frog experiment when you throw the frog inside the boiling water, it jumps out and after a while it gets used to it. So, okay, we always had like close to double digit inflation in Turkey, but like last couple of years, it really went to triple digits maybe. And when it's initially started to increase, uh, like 
that quickly. I literally would he hear 13, 14 year old people on the street talk about inflation. Yeah. So now it's less and less because I uh, like everything people get used to it. But one good thing is that, so I don't know if you know this, but um, the first coinage was actually in Turkey. In this place, this country called Lydia was the first coinage in the world. So maybe, you know, Croesus and Aliates and all those people, they were the first ones that standardized coins and made the coin coinage, mintage. So I always, I, I kind of sometimes make fun of it. We are the grandkids of the people who invented the coinage that have no information about money. So, uh, that's, interesting uh, stuff. But yeah. hard assets you are, we were talking about Turkey is uh, a lot of people like gold. It's like a traditional stuff. And... I don't know, like, for example, at weddings and all that stuff, people give gold to each other, not to each other, but to the people who are getting married. And that's been a tradition for a long time. I try to break it since 2017. I'm giving out Bitcoin, but I don't know. <laughs> There's still so few people do it. But also a lot of people are into real estate investing and hard assets. And the softer the money gets... Uh, non-hard assets end up becoming hard assets as well. For example, a lot of people were uh, yeah, making money by buying and selling cars because you buy a car, inflation, uh, th th there's cheap money around and inflation increases and the car becomes more valuable. You sell the car and you get a new one. So a lot of people used to do that in Turkey because Everything was at some point a store of value. Like, you know, I could get some detergent and it would become a store of value against the lira. So, is also uh, real estate and gold are the two things that people uh, mostly use to protect each other mm -hmm. from uh, inflation? The other day, the current president of Turkey actually said, uh, We are having a hard time to. Uh, so, a lot of people. Uh, have these gold coins and they hold it themselves and the president was complaining that he they are not successful to bring those coins out into the economy because people don't want to they want to yeah have it themselves in their house or in their vault or whatever which is uh, a way better way anyways like i, I feel yes. like that's that's that this is the weird thing of politics when it comes like oh the economy is slowing down then they want to uh increase spending which mm -hmm. does nothing like we we need a better savings we need a better foundation of economy that we actually can build capital and that we actually can build companies which then mm -hmm. leads to more prosperity the the yes. the mindset of like oh let's bring everyone to spend their money so we can have a more prosperous Uh, society, this is like complete nonsense for me. Yeah. You know what else is happening recently in Turkey? By the way, Turkey also, uh, Central Bank also it likes gold. So they also buy gold and keep gold in the reserves, blah, blah, blah. But recently we have really high interest rates. So if you park your money at the bank, they pay you, I don't know, like uh, over 50% a year. So a lot of people uh, from, let's say, let's say you, you go to your bank and you get a loan from your bank, okay? And you are paying, uh, I don't know, 6% interest to the bank in a year. So you take that money, you bring it to Turkey, you put it in a Turkish bank, get the interest uh, rate, convert it back to euros and, yeah, get a higher return. So this is called the uh, carry trade. So recently, uh, a lot of money is coming to Turkey for carry trade. And so our reserves are increasing, but I think they are buying gold instead of holding the FX reserves. And recently I did this calculation. Uh, I took out the last, since 2019, the For every quarter, they release how much gold the 
central bank bought or sold. So I took all those numbers and I calculated, let's say if they bought Bitcoin instead of gold, they would have an excess of $80 billion. If they bought 10% Bitcoin and 90% gold, they would have I don't know, an excess of $20 billion or something. So it was very interesting. And of course, I tweeted out to the uh, Minister of Finance, but of course, it was just for fun. I don't think he'll take it seriously anyways. He's currently focusing on taxing the shit out of everything. Uh, so. he, he wants to get money, uh, so he wants to tax everything. <laughs> no, it's crazy. Like the other day, I think he suggested that, uh, so you're a waiter at a place, let's say, and you get a tip. He asked that 10% of the tip to be taxed, which is new, you know. The tips, ta taxing the tips, it's uh, that's crazy. Yeah. I know. I also read today that uh, the number of traffic fines that people get for driving a red light or whatever, you know, speeding, etc., it increased six times compared to the same season of last year. So they are literally fining people extra. They are adding more taxes. Yeah. It's interesting times. Wait, wait, what was this? Uh, so people get more fined for traffic uh, fines? Yeah. Or? There are more controls and more fines and blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. Last yeah, no, year, I, I think it was in March. Up until March, it was, I don't know, 1 million fines. And this year, up until March, it was like 5 million something. It's a lot. <laughs> I just looked it up. Uh, in Austria, actually, tips are also taxed, as I see it. <laughs> I never yes. knew it. So, like, mm -hmm. if you, even if you go to wait, a waiter is a, a small tip, they have to pay uh -huh. taxes on that. <laughs> okay. I, in Turkey, it wasn't the case, though. Like, so. But it's crazy. Like, I it should not be there. Mm -hmm. Is there a tax that, uh, like, uh, is there taxes that you think would make sense or is, is, is taxes um, a bad concept in general? I mean, technically, uh, money printing is taxation and we already do it enough. So there was a list of, uh, I don't know, tax percentages in different countries across OECD countries. And Turkey was at the low part of the scale so like there was bulgaria which was which had very low taxes and germany was high blah 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 austria was high turkey was low but when you take the inflate the money printing into account turkey has the highest taxation among all the oecd countries like it's, it's higher than norway it's higher than finland but nobody considers it that way how aware are people in, in Turkey about Bitcoin? Uh, well, you know, when money gets low quality, people cut corners more. In Even in doing their business, like you see more shrinkflation. You see, uh, shrinkflation is not just the, you know, lower sizes, but also lower quality. Even in construction, like, I know, constructors still put less cement than they are supposed to do, blah, 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 you know. And I think the same applies with Bitcoin because people think they will cut corners by buying shit coins and it doesn't happen. So like Bitcoin is, I think, slowly getting more understood. Uh, like we have a good group. It's growing slowly, but we have a very solid group. Uh, it's a spin off Arnum Zwanzig. Uh, I think yeah, the ours is Irmebir, uh, which means 21 in Turkish. I think it was the first international spin-off of Aino Zvanzik. And yeah, we, we are supporting each other, meeting up occasionally. The, that group is, yeah, uh, has really good Bitcoiners, but the most of the population is into whatever coin that's hype at the moment, you know? Like, yeah. let it be Pepe, let it be Shiba or whatever, you know, whatever is hype. So, and the sad thing is like this, this inflation will come in every part of the world. Yeah. Uh, yes. In, in, I always say we are front running. So 
Venezuela is front running Lebanon. Lebanon is front running Turkey. Turkey is front running, let's say, France. France is front running Austria. Austria is front running Switzerland. Switzerland is front running USA. So wherever has fiat, it will happen. It's uh, inevitable. Do you see fiat going away? I <laughs> human stupidity is not going away, so probably fiat will stay there some time too. But. Thank you. You already made it halfway through the video and I'm really, really grateful to have you here. Two things make this channel possible. You as a watcher and listener who keep supporting this channel. And another one is all the Bitcoin brands that I partner up with, like 21 Bitcoin, who support me from the very start and where I personally buy my Bitcoin from. With Code Robin, you even get a discount when you buy Bitcoin with them. And now also Bitbox. Bitbox is the simplest and securest way to secure your Bitcoin. And I heard a crazy statistics. Only 2% of Bitcoiners hold their Bitcoin in a hardware wallet. How crazy is that? Don't be in that 98% bracket. Be in the 2% bracket. And if you have self-custody and you know your friend does not have, maybe he needs a Christmas present. Maybe he needs a birthday present. And a small life hack, if you use code ROBIN, you get 5% off your order, plus you support my channel. And uh, now, let's get back to the video. I also told I also think that we will have to live with fiat for a long time. Uh, yeah. Maybe maybe my whole lifetime. Let's see. And maybe even beyond that well, a good long thing time. Is that you and I, for example, don't live on fiat really. It's a, for me, it's just a tool of exchange. Like, and you know, this Michael Goldstein, the Bitstein on Twitter. No, no. What was it? Yes, it was his article. It's like, everyone is a scammer. I sometimes feel like a scammer when people accept fiat for my stuff, you know? Like, once you know how superior Bitcoin is, paying someone in fiat is like, uh, I scammed him again, you know? He accepted my shitty fiat, so... I, <laughs> that, that's uh, an interesting that perspective. Really. Yeah. And you also uh, told me before that you want to talk about you. You tried to orange bill a, a big uh, Austrian investment firm. Yes, it's this group called Prince Horn, uh, and I know it was like I think it was the time where uh, the New Year party of two thousand nineteen. I met a friend, friend who worked at this company called Prince Horn, and he was like in the investments division. And I tried to orange pill him. I even talked to Seyfedi and I'm like, well, if this company is looking to get orange pilled, would you go and yeah, like do a seminar and teach them? And he was, yeah, sure, I can do that. But they missed that opportunity. So, you know, Corona happened. And a year later, the uh, oil prices went to negative. And this company was long... Uh, oil commodity so technically i know that they were potent potentially losing a lot of money so once i saw this news i wrote to this guy and i'm like well you remember bitcoin i think you were very big on oil and oil is going negative this could be your escape hatch he's like oh we got some information before we got rid of the oil contracts blah 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 whatever you know and this year I tried again because that was the ETF launch and may maybe they'll go like the ETF route or whatever, you know. And he's like, no, it's too expensive. And, and you know, normally third time has the charm, but I think they need like a fourth time or something. Who knows? It's uh, this argument that Bitcoin is too expensive. It's so dumb on so many levels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I see it like when, when people are talking about that, it's like they only see the unit price, which does not matter at all. You have to look at the whole thing, how much uh, market valuation is already in there, how much, uh, like how big is Bitcoin and how big can it be? Uh, uh -huh. And this is, uh, and then see people say, oh no, it's too expensive, it's 70,000. It's like one, no, but... I always say, like, imagine every Bitcoin, every millionaire wants one Bitcoin. Yeah. It's not possible because they're like three times as many bit, uh, millionaires than there are Bitcoins. 
No, the also millionaires like inflate a lot too, you know. <laughs> I think if in year 2019, there were like, I don't know, 20 million less millionaires in the world, you know. So I don't know. I'm not sure of the number, but it they, they inflate a lot, like uh, because money is abundant and, you know, it's worthless anyway. So but, inflation makes us all millionaires. Yes, Great. yes. You Great. know, I used us. to be a billionaire. So in 2006, uh, Turkey got rid of six zeros out of its money. So let's say uh, right now, 32 uh, liras, Turkish liras is $1. Uh, if we didn't get rid of the six zeros, it would be 32 million liras per $1. So yeah, oh. in 2006, everybody in Turkey was a millionaire slash billionaire, whatever, but then they... Yeah, <laughs> deleted six zeros. I think if it continues like this, we'll probably delete another zero in the next couple of years. It's, it's, I can't believe that people still trust in this. Yeah. Like the, you know what's just... so funny? So, uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so let's say uh, the government is doing some investment in a city or something. When they talk about it, they say, Okay, we invested a couple trillion liras into this. So they used the old money when talking about the investments they did. But for example, there's a budget deficit. And when they mention it, they talk with the new money. <laughs> so, you know, the, the funny thing is that this happened up until 2019. But for some reason, in 2019, they stopped it. I don't know what happened. Maybe somebody started making fun of them or something, but this is just so funny how they mess up people's mind. And that's why education is so important. And I love that you have a, a website, I think something with Bitcoin only. And I saw it quickly and there was really that's cool. That's not my I website, think. by the way. I just oh, not like so. this website. So I shared it there. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a really good one. Uh, I yeah, like it a lot. They have like, all the materials there, they have all the directions there, whatever you want to do, you just think and go there. You can like, oh, I want mm -hmm. to hear podcasts, they are the other podcasts, or uh, I, I want to have a job, then you'll get directed to jobs and whatever you want to do, you can directly go there. I, I love the website that you link it. I thought it, it, it's, it's yours, but I, yeah, <laughs> I, no, no. I was mistaken. Yeah. No, I, I just like it. I want, I'm happy if more people sees it. So I put it up there. Definitely. Do, do yeah. you know who 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 made it? <laughs> I know, I knew, but I don't know. I follow so many Bitcoiners. I don't care if I follow thousands. If somebody is in Bitcoin and they do stuff, I follow them. And this was a very old uh, follow that I did. I don't know at the moment, but maybe it's listed on the website somewhere. Yeah, but, I didn't look like, closely, but yeah, probably it's listed. Yeah, I'm sorry to the uh, person who maintains that website. I I'm not sure who you are at the moment. Uh, no problem. We, we we could write it in the in the description. When I see it, I will, yeah. I will write it in there. Um, yeah, it's it's a good website. I, I love it a lot uh, because it gives like an overview of everything. And I actually had this thought in mind that I also want to do something similar than that, mm -hmm. uh, uh, like I think a year ago. But there's always something else coming up. I was like, oh, let's first build the Twitter. Let's first build the yeah. podcast. Let's first build all the other stuff. Uh, but I still might do it. Uh, like just making a website where I'm getting like, hey, you want to learn about Bitcoin? Go there. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I like that a lot. Would you do it in English or in, yeah, for Austrians? Uh, only English. I I do it. Uh, I think there are a lot of great materials in in, in, in Austria already. Mm -hmm. uh, in 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 German yeah. language, Mises. there are also there's also a lot of great material in uh, in English, uh -huh. but I'm more English guy. My girlfriend speaks English with me uh, mm -hmm. most of the time. I speak with my friends English even. So like I think ninety percent of my time spent speaking is and especially also consuming uh, mm -hmm. is like, like I think ninety percent of my time spent speaking with other people is English. And 100% of the time consuming stuff is English. 
Like I, oh, I rarely watch anything in German or something like that. Yeah, the, the, that's the kind of a problem, by the way, why on why uh, Turkey is not really Bitcoinized because there's a language barrier, uh, and you know, like people are dependent on uh, ter- third parties, like people who translate stuff or like you know, uh, yeah. So usually the narratives are, I think, uh, generated in English. So if you have access to English, you get first-hand information. And if not, you get uh, the information over a third party. And yeah, uh, so with the Bitcoin stuff, like a lot of Turkish people uh, who start talking about Bitcoin go into the shitcoin routes because the meme coins, altcoins, whatever, they pay them generously. Since they are companies, they have marketing budgets and all that stuff. So this is a a problem, I think, for the Turkish people. The the guides are blind. Yeah. So you have to make more Turkish content then? (laughs) Yeah. We we try to do like time to time. uh, I don't know, maybe, you know, Pretty Flaco, he is responsible of adopting Bitcoin conferences uh yeah so he's also turkish and sometimes he has these bounties for our young bitcoiner friends to translate the articles into turkish and this and that so it's helpful we we need more education that's like so important yes. uh, to have education everywhere in the world in the local language i mean at some point i feel like everything will be translated by ai and it will not mm-hmm. matter that much but it's hard to say if this future is in one, two years or seven, eight years uh, or mm-hmm. 15, 20. I have no clue. Like I thought it's already here at this point. So it already t- way, takes longer than I thought. You know, uh, <laughs> let's talk about AI stuff a little bit. You know, recently this Michael Dell, uh, Michael Dell tweeted about Bitcoin and scarcity and all that stuff. I think a little what's behind it is that you know, they are setting up this new uh, AI center for Twitter. Twitter's Grok. Uh, that Dell is doing that. So I'm sure that they were, yeah, uh, together with NVIDIA. And I'm sure that they paid a lot of money for NVIDIA's chips. Because they are currently scarce. Because, you know, th- there's an imbalance between the demand and, you know, the production. There's an imbalance. So... I know it costs like three thousand something dollars to produce an H one hundred chip, and they sell it up to forty thousand dollars. So there's a scarcity there, but it's not like real scarcity. It's like a temporary scarcity or something. So I'm sure that it kind of helps people, someone understand that absolute scarcity is much, much, much more valuable than these regulatory or you know production based scarcities yeah i i think the uh michael Saylor just talked to michael dell <laughs> yeah probably I, 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 the, the, I think it's I not a, yeah uh, was it after your uh interview with sailor or before uh, after after like i had the interview uh, i think in in bitcoin Prague, so it's now uh, a week ago, and this was coming up mm-hmm. like this week. So yeah. uh, this was after that. That's interesting. Yeah, I wish I was in Prague. Like I love going to Bitcoin conferences. It's amazing. But I'm really too lazy to get. A, we have to get visas to uh, European Union countries, and I really hate begging for that permission because I'm like, I want to go to your country. I want to spend some time and some money there and I'm begging for that. So it's like so annoying. It's how hard is it to to get the visa? It's not hard. I had like long visas because I used to work with a German company. So, and like you get a Schengen visa, you can visit all the EU union country, uh, European union countries, but you need to apply for it and they need to give you a date and the date is a little farther away. And I'm like, eh, 
I don't want to deal with that. So instead, I rather go to El Salvador or some other place. Like, Will do you think that Bitcoin could even eliminate those those borders to a certain extent? Which one? Do, do you think that Bitcoin could uh, eliminate those uh, physical restrictions of borders when we all have the same money and we don't have to? Because a lot of the military use, I think, is yeah. to protect their own currency right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if everyone has Bitcoin as their own currency, I think military use will be completely changed. It will not go away, but it will be completely changed. And maybe this could... Um, leads to a, a way more open world mm -hmm. yeah so i don't know i i had this thread before jason lowry was like big on the soft war stuff so yeah basically the military is there to protect the borders and blah 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 and like i don't know it, the money is taxes are collected to protect the borders and this and that so uh, Yeah, it's like a big complex uh, issue, but I think if ownership is guaranteed by nodes and everyone else, like like in Bitcoin and only in Bitcoin, other uh, ownerships are not like finalized or guaranteed in my opinion. Bitcoin is the, the only true ownership. And once people, more people understand it, it will become bigger. And like, let's say I, in the future, people can buy, let's say a house for hundred thousand Satoshis or whatever. So mobility will be much more important. And I think, yeah, permissions will decrease and borders will decrease, but it will take a long time because no government wants to give away that power. So. It, it it will take uh, it will take some some time there. Yeah. yeah, probably uh, a very long time, but absolutely perfect. But I personally want to spend my time and money in places like like a single issue water in places that support Bitcoin. You know. I want to yeah. go to Suriname, for example, because this Maya is working there to become the president of Suriname and it, it's pretty cool so I don't know or other places like Uganda is interesting they have this orphanage with over 100 kids that they are taking care of and they accept Bitcoin donations they give Bitcoin classes and I know you can do gorilla tours uh, with Bitcoin and yeah it's, I would love to spend my time and effort there so instead of yeah. Right now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating to see the different countries adopting it and, and the game, game theory playing out. Mm -hmm. um, let's come closer to the end routine uh, of our podcast and ask these questions now every time in the podcast. Uh, and I'm really passionate about it to, to learn from other Bitcoiners and give them the stage to learn from each other. Um, what are you currently uh, passionate about or learning deeply about besides Bitcoin? Uh, besides Bitcoin? Well, so... Um, I'm I, I'm really not like someone who loves uh, specializing on things. So I look at different things all the time. I don't know, like at this time, I'm kind of, I don't know, looking on robotics. Yeah, because I don't know, I'll start working with my old company again and they have these new products for robotics. And I know, like part of the job will be like to find startups and supply them these special gearboxes free of charge so they get a beginning and all that stuff so it's interesting in my opinion so humanoid robots and all that stuff so last couple of weeks i started to focus on that and i'm also like i i do composting machines so i'm also doing different researches on that because i know <laughs> we started to compost make machines to compost uh, dead people so I'm experimenting with some, yeah, it's interesting stuff. So I'm experimenting on composting diseased people and not, not, not personally experimenting, don't get me wrong, but on pets and yeah, all that stuff. So that's an interesting topic for me, looking for, I don't know, different enzymes and bacteria and all that stuff. So. Yeah, uh, that's an 
Very interesting <laughs> topic. Really cool. Uh, thanks for sharing this with us. Um, we have an end routine also in the podcast where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. Uh, right. And the question for you from the previous guest is, if you could travel in time, would you go back in time to 2009 so you could buy or mine oh. more Bitcoin? Or would you go forward in time to 20? Uh, 45 to see how Bitcoin succeeded. I know I rather stay in this time actually because uh, first of all, you know how they say everyone uh, gets Bitcoin at the price they deserve. Since this is an absolutely scarce asset, I mean, of course, there's not abs could be changes if we all agree on the number of coins or whatever in the future. There could be changes, whatever, but. In absolutely uh, scarce things, I say I'm only destined to hold as many sets as I'm, yeah, destined to hold. Because, like, with money, everyone can be a millionaire, you know, but uh, it becomes harder and harder to become, to have 100,000 bitcoins, you know. So, I don't know. I, I think it's not like more than deserve. You, you are destined. To custody a certain amount of sets. That's how I feel. So I just want to see how it plays out. Amazing. I, I, I love it. And, and it's, it's like staying in the moment and staying present is, 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 is the better move, uh, I feel like, too. Um, perfect. And yeah, thank you, Stack Moore, for, for, for being on my podcast. Uh, before I let you go, where can people find you and where can people uh, uh, ask you questions? I'm uh, 1971 Bubble on Twitter. I'm also on Noster. Yeah, you can contact me from there. Perfect. Then, yeah, thank you for being on. And for everyone watching, uh, thank you for watching and listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye bye. Okay, thank you. Nice to meet you.